Start with pressing the cuffs and the sleeves. No matter if it's a barrel cuff or a French cuff, I start eyeing on the inside of the cuff. Once that's done, I look at the outside. If there's still some wrinkles, I iron again. Always make sure to iron from the outside of the cuff in, otherwise you'll get little wrinkles by the stitching, especially on shirts with a sewn interlining. Once I'm on the cuff, it's time to iron the sleeve. If you just have a regular ironing board, I suggest to lay down the sleeve flat because at this stage, you're ironing two layers at the same time. If you don't do it right, you'll get wrinkles and it'll take you much longer. It really pays to have a system here. I always start in a corner of the armpit. Then I iron the middle parts I also always start in the back side, and once I'm done, I flip it over to the front side and repeat the motion. Try to iron in the middle part, and when you're done, you can add a crease on top. If you like a strong crease, you can now add the clapper, which is a piece of wood that really helps to get a strong crease in it. Personally, I'm not a big fan of the crease, and because of that, I use a sleeve board. The big advantage of the sleeve board is that the results are much nicer, you'll have fewer wrinkles and you have no crease all the way around. I start by pulling the sleeve of the sleeve board so the seam is on top. Now I work my way around until I get to the seam again and I've ironed everything. Most dress shirts have one or more pleats sewn onto the cuff to create more volume for your sleeve, and the sleeve board really helps you to get nice creases in the exact length that you want. The key to success in ironing is not to use broad motions all over the place, but short, controlled movements that have enough pressure. As you may know, ironing is also known as pressing, and that's because you have to press down. Press the collar and the yoke. First of all, you flip up your collar and you remove any collar stays if that's possible. If they're sewn in, just leave them in there. Now I iron from one side to the middle, I stop. I go to the other side and iron again to the middle. Avoid ironing from the inside out or in one motion because it will create wrinkles. Once you're done with the underside of the collar, flap it open so you're now ironing the outside of the collar. Again, outside to the middle from one side and outside to the middle from the other side. If you have a collar with sewn interlining, it can be a little more tricky. Try to pull the fabric so it stays flat, especially along the stitched seams. Again, use short strokes and not bold long motions. Now, some people like to fold the collar back down and iron on top of it so it gets its natural shape. If you want a soft roll collar, especially on top, or if you have removable collar stays, I suggest you skip that step. Once your collar is done, it's time for the yoke. Most ironing boards have a perfect shape to iron one side of the yoke at a time. Make sure the yoke lays flat, and then with short motions, iron it nice and flat. Move into the middle, iron the middle of the yoke, and then go on and move on to the other side of the yoke. The technique is the same. While you do that though, make sure you don't iron deep wrinkles into the back of your shirt. It's time to finish the body. First, I'll let the buttons on the board 
and iron it from the back. That way I can go all the way in one nice clean motion to make sure there are no wrinkles. Now flip the shirt so the buttons face up. You can quickly go into the areas in between the buttons. Tap down again and so forth. I do this because otherwise your lines will become wavy and it will show in the front of the shirt. Most ironworks are shaped so they're slimmer at the end and so you can lay the shirt down and pull it flat. Once I've done that, I start in the direction of the pattern, if it's a stripe, in the stripe pattern, from the bottom to the top. Since the front of your shirt is the most visible part, you want to make sure it looks extra clean and neat. Make sure the area around the armhole is neat, as well as the area on top next to the collar. If you happen to iron a grease, flatten it out, spray some water on top of it, either with the iron or with your spray bottle, and go over it again. In case your shirt has a pocket, that can be tricky to iron. Make sure you pull it flat, iron it separately in short strokes. If there's excess fabric, you can avoid creases by ironing along them, never across them. The pointed tip of your iron comes in very handy here, just like in every area where there is a little corner. Because most irons don't have steam holes right in the tip of the iron, it pays to separately steam them or use some water that is sprayed on. At the end of the day, you want a nice smooth result, especially along the seams. Once the button front of the shirt is done, I move on to the back. It's the same procedure again. I start on one side and pull it flat so I can then start to iron. If the shirt has pleats in the back, align the pleat and iron over it so it looks neat exactly the way you want. If you have a handmade shirt, especially an Italian one, chances are it has grinze along the seam of the yoke and the back. To get them to look right, use the iron in short strokes pointing towards the yoke seam and you want that wavy effect. That's part of the craftsmanship and the handwork and it's not a defect or something that you can eliminate by ironing. When you're done with one side of the back, slightly rotate it over the board and keep ironing the middle At this time, I also check the yoke on top and see if there are any wrinkles, I can go over it again. Slightly rotate it over the board and then the other side. And voila, now you're done. Simply pull the shirt off the board, put it in a hanger and button the top button or sometimes the top two buttons if you have a big collar. Now you can just hang it in your closet and your shirt is ready to go next time you need it. As I mentioned before, because of all the time it needs to set up, it really pays to iron all your shirts at once. If you enjoyed this guide, give us a thumbs up, hit that little bell so videos like this come right to your inbox and stay tuned for part three where we talk about ironing dress pants. In today's video, I'm wearing a more relaxed outfit which is ideal for ironing. It consists of a pressed 
dress shirt, which is striped in blue and white cotton. I'm using barrel cuffs, not French cuffs, because that way that won't interfere with the ironing. I'm wearing a pair of navy blue denim with a brown crocodile belt and a silver buckle, which works well with my silver and carnelian ring. The shoes are antique brown penny loafers and they work well with a belt. My socks consist of a red and blue. They're shadow striped socks from Fort Belvedere, which you can find in our shop here. They tie together the shoes, the jeans, as well as the ring I'm wearing. <laughs>